While it might seem a bit premature, Biden's pretty miserable poll numbers and the Democrats' upcoming succession crisis have got a lot of poll watchers looking forward to 2024 and the possible Republican nominees that the Democrats will come up against. Up until recently, former President Donald Trump was by far and away the bookie's favorite. But in the last few weeks and months, Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, has emerged as a serious new contender, with a recent GOP New Hampshire poll giving DeSantis a two-point lead amongst Republicans. And this is certainly significant, given that New Hampshire is one of the first states to cast ballots for the nomination. And as such, a good result here often precedes victory. Trump himself won New Hampshire in 2016, his first victory on the road to nomination. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at who Ron DeSantis is, why he's so popular among the Republicans, and whether he can actually dethrone Donald Trump. This video is brought to you by our new show, The Daily Briefing. That's the show where we run through the five most important news stories each day giving you a rundown of everything you need to know about from around the world in just a matter of minutes. Watch the show on the separate TLDR Daily YouTube channel or listen along by searching in your favorite podcast app. To start, let's take a crack at the most obvious question. Who actually is Ron DeSantis? Born in 1978, DeSantis moved around Florida quite a lot while growing up, before settling in Dunedin. During his youth, DeSantis excelled in athletics, particularly in baseball, where he was part of the team that went on to win the Little League World Series in 1991. After graduating high school, though, he went on to Yale College, where he majored in history and graduated with high academic honors in 2001. While at Yale, he continued with his baseball career, becoming the captain of the varsity team and joining the Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity. Distinctions he shares with former president George H.W. Bush. He then went on to Harvard Law School, where he graduated in 2004, also with high honors. After law school, he pursued military service and became a member of the Navy Judge Advocate General Corps. He was originally assigned to Guantanamo Bay before being transferred to join the Navy SEAL teams and being deployed to combat in Iraq. After his stint abroad, he worked as a special assistant U.S. attorney in the DOJ during the Bush administration. He was then honorably discharged in 2010 with the Bronze Star, Global War on Terror Service Medal, and the Iraqi Champion Medal, although he continues to remain as a Navy Reserve. DeSantis first ran for Congress in 2012 to represent Florida's 6th Congressional District, and he won. Despite a quiet tenure, six years later in 2018, he ran for the governorship of Florida and won again, in, in some part thanks to an endorsement from Trump. And it's there that we find him today. Quite a beefy CV, right? Well, now you've got a sense of the man, let's talk about why the Republicans love him so much. DeSantis ended up rising to political prominence during the pandemic, which placed governors and various public health policies in the limelight more than ever. DeSantis was originally pretty cautious about COVID, ordering bars and nightclubs to close in March of 2020 and issuing a statewide shutdown in April 2020. However, he began to change tack later in the year, lifting all business restrictions in September 2020. But it wasn't until 2021 that DeSantis really became a household name. That's because while various Democratic governors maintained restrictions, despite the widespread availability of the vaccine, DeSantis jumped on Twitter and various other media outlets to broadcast criticisms of his blue counterparts, which perhaps unsurprisingly went down pretty well with the COVID skeptic Republican base. DeSantis has also taken a tough line on so-called culture war issues, signing a law banning critical race theory in Florida schools, a law banning transgender athletes from participating in sports events, and an anti-riot law, which would stiffen penalties for riots and violent protesters, as well as giving pay rises and bonuses to the police and increasing their total annual budget. He also recently accused the Walt Disney Company of using their media platform to push left-wing propaganda, 
with him pushing for legislation to revoke their special governing privileges within Florida. And while he hasn't been as enthusiastic about Trump's illegitimate claims of electoral fraud as other Republican politicians, in April, he did create a new voter fraud police force, which went down predictably well with many Republicans. So you can probably understand now why he's popular with Republicans. So let's address the million dollar question. Can he beat Donald Trump in the 2024 GOP presidential primary? Well, it certainly won't be easy. Although Trump doesn't have the firm grip on the party he once did, he still is a kingmaker in many ways, and has far greater name recognition than DeSantis. Nonetheless, there is a school of thought within the GOP that it's time for Trump to step aside. While he's popular within the GOP, Trump's approval ratings in wider America are pretty dire. He left office with a negative 20 approval rating, well below DeSantis's net approval rating of about plus 15% in Florida. And according to an ABC News poll, 58% of Americans think that Trump should be indicted for his role in January 6th, with that including 91% of Democrats and crucially 62% of independents. And if Trump were to win in 2024, at the age of 78, he would become the oldest president to have ever been elected, older even than Biden. Given all of this, you can see why some Republicans think that DeSantis is actually a safer bet. Ultimately though, perhaps the most important thing will be whether the GOP can avoid an internal squabble over the nomination. If current polling is anything to go by, the best outcome for Republicans will be for Trump to quietly pass the baton over to DeSantis, but there are no signs of Trump being willing to hand over the reins just yet. Now, if Trump doesn't voluntarily step aside, he might be indicted for his involvement in January 6th, or his election probe in Georgia, where he pressured the Georgian Secretary of State to quote, find 10,780 votes, or even his tax investigation in New York all of which could effectively push him out of the race anyway. However, if none of these things come through and Trump decides that he does want another shot at 2024, DeSantis and the wider GOP establishment will have to decide whether they want to let him run again, despite his pretty poor polling numbers, or whether they should fight him for the nomination, which would probably end up in a nasty dogfight between DeSantis and Trump ultimately hurting both of their electoral prospects. In the end though, we don't actually know what's gonna happen next, but if you want to be updated as it plays out, then you should check out The Daily Briefing. That's our daily show where we explain five news stories every single day. We pick the big stories, the ones you need to know about, as well as some smaller ones that you might have otherwise missed. So if you want to be better informed about the world around you and news from all over the globe, then you really ought to subscribe. And it's only a few minutes each day, so what do you have to lose? We post a video version every weekday over on the TLDR Daily YouTube channel, so you can subscribe over there. Or you can listen along to the podcast by searching for the TLDR Daily Briefing in your favorite podcast app. Thanks for your support, and I hope you enjoy the show.